What if there's no rapture before the Great Tribulation? Should you care? How would you react? Would your faith in God and the Bible be shaken? Could you end up being part of the apostasy or the great falling away referenced in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 3? I'd like to share a few things to help you both understand what the Bible says is going to happen and how you and I are going to get through it. The when of the rapture or the gathering of believers to meet the Lord is highly debated. I was taught Jesus was going to remove his church before the great tribulation time. But after careful study over many years, I've learned that this is not what is taught in the Bible. There's only one second coming of Jesus Christ, and it happens after the great tribulation. The clearest passage is the words of Jesus himself, found in Matthew chapter 24, verses 29 through 31. He says, Immediately after the tribulation of those days, the sun will be darkened, the moon will not give its light, and the stars will fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then the sign of the Son of Man will appear in heaven, and all the tribes of the earth will mourn, and they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he will send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they will gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. And for those who have been told that the elect is only the Jews, I'd encourage you to read my post or watch the video where I speak about who the elect are according to Scripture. Here's the transcript. Here's a link to the video. I'll also put it in the comments below. John shares at the beginning of Revelation, chapter 1, verse 7, that everyone will see Jesus when he returns to earth to rule and reign for a thousand years. It reads, Behold, he is coming with clouds, and every eye will see him, even those who pierced him. And all the tribes of the earth will mourn because of him. Even so, amen. I've shared all the relevant scriptures in many other posts and videos. If you're interested, please click on the link at the end of this short video. There's a playlist with the collection there. The question remains, why should you care when the rapture is going to occur? If it comes before the time of the tribulation and the rule of the Antichrist, it really doesn't matter much to us as believers in Christ. We will not be here and those left behind will have to figure things out without us. So let us eat and drink and spend one hour in church a week, for tomorrow we might all be raptured. Ah, if this was only true, but it's not. Since so many have been taught this myth, I fear most will fall away from the faith when the events of Revelation start to unfold, as they are not expecting this to happen to them. Jesus knew there would only be a small minority of people who still have faith when he returns. In Luke chapter 18, verses 7 and 8, we read, And shall God not avenge his own elect, who cry out day and night to him, though he bears long with them? I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, Will he really find faith on the earth? What we need to do is to cling to the promises found in the word. Keep our focus on the future, not on the chaos going on around us. A verse I like to keep in mind is found in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 13. Therefore, with your minds ready for action, be sober-minded, Set your hope completely on the grace to be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. So that's how you get through things. You're looking at your future. I know some of you might be afraid of the prospect of going through a time of persecution and the world chaos that we see in Revelation. I get that. I sometimes feel it too. However, 
The Bible is full of promises and examples of how God takes care of his own. I've got a post and video that talks about God's protection, and I'll be sure to share the link at the end of this one. Here is one of my favorite scriptures that I believe is describing what our mindset should be as we find ourselves in the Great Tribulation. From Isaiah chapter 26, verses 20 and 21. Come, my people, enter your chambers. Shut the door behind you. Hide yourself, as it were, for a little moment until the indignation is past. For behold, the Lord comes out of his place to punish the inhabitants of the earth for their iniquity. The earth will also disclose her blood and will no longer cover her slain. If you understand what is going to happen and how long this time of trouble will be, you can start counting down the days until the return of Jesus Christ, should you find yourself in the tribulation, of course. As the reign of the Antichrist is only 42 months or 1260 days, Again, I have another post video showing why it is three and a half years and not the seven years commonly taught. See? It should be noted that the really nasty events are at the very end when the seven bowls of God's wrath are poured out. This occurs after the seventh seal is opened and the last trumpet has sounded. You will see in Revelation chapter 16 the, the effects of the bowls of wrath are clearly upon the unbelievers and the kingdom of the beast. For example, the first bowl in Revelation chapter 16, verse 2, we read, So the first went and poured out his bowl upon the earth, and a foul and loathsome sore came upon the men who had the mark of the beast, those who worshipped his image. Jesus clearly tells us to expect tribulation in this world, but also that we can still have peace because of him. In John chapter 16, verse 37, we read from the Amplified Classic Edition, I have told you these things so that in me you may have perfect peace and confidence. In the world you have tribulation and trials and distress and frustration, but be of good cheer, take courage, be confident, certain, undaunted, for I have overcome the world. I have deprived it of power to harm you and have conquered it for you cool. We have many passages that encourage us to have hope and to be looking forward to the return of Jesus Christ. I'd encourage you to do your own study. You'll notice all the letters by Paul and the other apostles make mention of our need to be looking towards our future when Jesus Christ is to be revealed at his return to earth. For now, I will close with one of my favorite end time passages. What Jesus says in Luke 21, verses 25 through 28. And there will be signs in the sun and in the moon and the stars and on the earth, distress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring, men's hearts failing them from fear and the expectation of those things which are coming on the earth for the powers of heaven will be shaken. Then they will see the son of man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Now, when these things begin to happen, look up, lift up your head, because your redemption draws near. Amen. Oh, here are the two video links. One on protection by God during the tribulation, holy defense. And this is the playlist of the best end time teachings I've posted so far. Feel free to share your thoughts in the comments below. Please like any of these videos that you find to be useful to help others find them too. Thank you.